I think the media glorifies a whole lot of stuff they should never glorify. Yeah. The, the bikies, you know. Yeah. And, and, then, and then they're sucked into stuff. Oh, bikies are doing a toy run. Yeah. You know. You didn't buy into that? Oh, please. You know. And you know half the villains, you know, like it's, yeah. it's, it's quite silly. If they didn't trade on fear and think that otherwise they'd dress up like Ronald McDonald, wouldn't they? Like <laughs> I was ringing the bomb squad again. He goes, what have you, what have you done? I said, I said, mate, they're in the boot. Any other ideas? Welcome back to part two of my chat with retired Assistant Commissioner Ken Mackay. Uh, Ken, I'm just going to read a uh, quote uh, that you made and then uh, ask you to comment on it. Isn't it amazing how things come back to haunt you? They do. <laughs> <laughs> it's in writing. Yeah. And if, oh, well, I, I think you'll recognise the quote. You have to maintain the appropriate focus, otherwise gangs replenish themselves and they come back bigger and stronger and you have to knock them over again. Is that alluding to what we talked about in part one, where if you don't attend to the people at the lower level? At they, all levels, they, yeah. All levels of the criminal group. You know, they'll be they'll just... Kind of like weeds, mate. You don't pull the whole weed out and keeps growing, you know. Yeah. Um, and and you have to maintain the focus because, say, in a, let's go in the context of say Middle Eastern organised crime. Yeah. You know, the Middle East organised crime squad doesn't exist anymore, um, but certainly organised crime does. Yeah. And it's more than likely, and it's flourishing for the, the people I speak to in the police force now. So you just can't take the focus from it, you know. Right. We we tend to take the focus off rather than complete the task, you know. And again, I can understand that because we only have certain numbers and, and, right. so and you're, priorities you're... take over. But yeah, for argument's sake, there'd be a bucket load of um, Southeast Asian organised crime taking place as we speak. And we don't have a Southeast no, organised crime. That, that got, we got yeah. rid of that. Yeah. We, I suppose we did a fair bit of damage to it. Yeah. But it's still around, yeah. And if you don't have the focus on it, you don't know. Yeah. You know? So you could actually say, well, no, we don't have a problem because you don't know anything of, of it, you know. There's, there's two different things. You, yeah. You can have a problem. But if you say, well, we don't have a problem because there's no information to say we have a problem, that's because you haven't even looked for it. You know? <laughs> yeah, so you're not going to find the, the problem the, if you're yeah, not looking for it. Yeah. Different, but I, I think forces, yeah. like organised crime now, it, it's they'll say but we've got a generalist approach to it, but I think with specific types of crimes, you need those experts, don't you? You've got to know what's going on. That's You don't have to be, you can portray yourself an expert, but you've got to have people with the knowledge. It's always been the case. We've done it, had people with the knowledge. If you go way back to Italian organised crime, there was an, I remember in my young days in the police, there was a couple of senior police who had knew everything about the Italian yeah. organised crime in this state. Do you think that's, do you think that's gone away? No. Nah. Please, stop it. You know, like, uh, now we have stopped looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, do you think Southeast Asian crime has gone away? No, we have. We've prioritised it out the back door, you know. And I understand the issue of having to prioritise things, yeah, because of just the sheer numbers of the people we have employed doing these things. But you have to have the knowledge. The only way to deal with organised crime is know what you're dealing with, hmm. not just turn up and react to a problem. Uh, you know where. If you actually had the knowledge, you probably would have could have even sort of uh, preempted that problem and, and knew exactly who was going to do it, when they were going to do it, and why. You know, because the most uh, successful organised crime are the ones that stay under the radar. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That, that don't uh, stick their heads up too high. Well, exactly right. Yeah, you know, if you look at the Russians and we didn't, uh, and uh, uh, back in the day when the Romanians uh, uh, were yeah. uh, very very heavily involved in organised crime, and the Russians still are. Um, uh, and they're a diffi difficult group to uh, target. Oh, horrible, horribly yeah. hard, yeah. But it doesn't sort of – you've got to have some inkling of knowledge of what they're doing, who's involved and how they're doing it. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll never know. So, it, yeah, you have, you have that option of doing nothing and closing your eyes and just this thing and that doesn't exist or – having a real good look. It might frighten you what you find, but but that's the reality of it, you know. At least you're, you're finding the facts and you can base your prioritising policing on facts, you know. I just think that people just sort of have a – that's a fad. It's fad, I call it a bit of fad policing. You know, it's a fad, well, we're going to court this today and we're going to court that tomorrow, you know. 
you know, the more things change, the more things stay the same, you know. Like. Tell me about um, uh, there was one particular uh, case or an investigation, a, a strike force, uh, Sabret, was it? The Nomads, Newcastle? Yeah. The, yeah. the, the outlaw motorcycle gang and yeah. the drug dealing. Talk us about that because that had a lot of success and the way that you approached that investigation. Yeah, well, that, that was a, a joint job we did with a lot of the Newcastle fellows up yeah. there. And again, you, you, got to, you take on the locals because they have the knowledge of who's who. And they, the Nomads were largely uh, – the, the the group was largely New, uh, Newcastle based. Yep. Um, I think Richard Walsh was the boss there. Um, uh, but again, it's a typical biker group where you have four or five smart people and the rest are um, just buffoons, you know, like uh, they're just intellectual, in, intellectually inept people just going along for the ride, you know. And um, so the Newcastle was a perfect example of that. But they did move a lot of gear, uh, they manufactured a lot of amphetamine. Uh, and they moved it all the way up the New, New South Wales coast. Uh, they had a fellow, I think it was Todd Little, was up in um, uh, where was he up in um, the back, the back of the Tweed there. Yeah, uh, he uh, uh, had, it was manufacturing as well and sending it down. So it was a big transnational, or a big highway between Newcastle and, the, and Queensland, south, southeast Queensland, of, of the movement of all this um, amphetamine and other drugs. But also, they're all heavily involved in movement of firearms and. Um, what do you call bobcats and diggers and industrial yeah. industrial equipment? So they would steal anything. You Any know. anywhere to make a dollar. Yeah, yep. yeah, big. But there's big money in um, uh, in bobcats and and diggers yeah. and dumpers and trucks and, and industrial uh, machinery. But the main the main uh, line was the was the drugs. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what uh, that investigation uh, that. Pretty well dismantled that. Uh, that well, group, everyone, that the chapter. whole team was arrested. Yeah, even yeah. right up and down the coast. You know, yeah, a few of them died in the in the in the game, but uh, that was all right. Um, yeah, everyone was arrested. You know, and basically, one of the, the wonderful things you saw in that, or one of the enlightening things, is how um, a lot of women are treated in in as being attached to those uh, those crime groups because these these uh, bikies with the amount of amphet and and stuff that they induce themselves yeah. become horribly, horribly violent, you know, um, to the people they love, you know, like it's quite amazing. It's not, not, a, not a good culture. No. The, the profile that bikies have and the, yeah, the way it's portrayed in the media because I know when I was working on uh, uh, bikie investigations, they trade on fear, they trade on their reputation because that's, yeah, that's how they do the standover. We're coming into mm. town, look, we're, we're this uh, outlaw motorcycle well, gang. Yeah, if they like, if I just say, if they, if they didn't trade on fear and think that otherwise they'd dress up like Ronald McDonald, wouldn't they? Like, <laughs> So this is a type of commentary. Right, that's that, why, uh, well, so well, otherwise, that's why they dress up. They've got tattoos yeah. all over, and, 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 and big bodybuilding, and yeah. And, and and it was quite funny when the Middle Easterners went, tried to get into the bikey world. They weren't sort of big enough. They couldn't ride bikes, so they, yeah. they actually got a lot of the um, um, islanders to come with them because they were big people, you know, and big talk, muscles talk, and stuff. Talk us know. through that because there was a change in the, in the, the gangs, wasn't there? Because it was before it was very much um, based on uh, Australian non-ethnic people Yeah, white the supremacists gangs. and all that stuff. That, that, that all type, the of, type sort of stuff. Type, and yeah. then, then it changed with the islanders coming in, the Middle Eastern coming in. It, it yeah. changed the culture. Uh, I, think, I think Clissold, he was in jail out at Silverwater and um, he bashed and killed one of his... Uh, Gang members yeah. for some breach of protocol or something like that. Probably had a dirty bike or something like that. And um, he was in jail with Sammy Ibrahim. Yeah. And uh, and Cliss also sort of encouraged Sam to to come into the the bikey group, you know. Yeah. And Sam, typical, couldn't ride a bike, fell off the bike half a dozen times. When he got out of jail, he set up this group, you know, solely based to fill in gaps around the metropolitan area where they didn't have bikey groups. Was that the Brighton the notor was notorious? Was that what, no, no, was that? no, no. This is pre, yeah. pre that, right? Okay, um, this is straight into the bikey group, and so and because they didn't have the big muscles and the likes, they got a lot of the islanders to come on board into the bikey environment, yeah. and dress up like it was all dress ups, yeah, yeah, you know, okay. so just like you and when you're a little kid and your sister or something dressing up or something like that. But that's all it was, just to fill a void. And again, bikeys all the. You know, instill fear in the community and yeah. uh, and the, and the like, and set up drug distribution networks. It's solely that's all it was, um, and it's just for show, right? Um, that's all it is. Yeah, but with the, who in their right mind would dress like that? Come on. Do, do you think that uh, the media have given them too high a profile? 
Oh, I think the media glorifies a whole lot of stuff they should never glorify. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk us through that because we're on the true crime podcast, so well, I think it's- Yeah, uh, they, they, the bikies, you know. Yeah. And, and, then, and then they're sucked into stuff. Oh, bikies are doing a toy run. Yeah. You know. You didn't buy into that? Oh, please. You know, and you know half the villains, you know, like it's, yeah. it's, it's quite silly. Um, you know, movies and, and other forms of media yeah. glorify, you know, criminals and, and bikies, you know. Um, um, we were both at a lunch the other day when a certain fellow was there and it's and everyone's sort of in awe of him, remember? Yeah, you know? yeah. And, um, uh, and that, that sort of thing. I, I think the media has a lot to answer for in that regard, yeah. you know. Um, and again, uh, we don't apportion like, like the, the the recent shooting of the two police officers and the, and the civilian up, yeah. in, up in Queensland. Um, what we're seeing through the media is a we, we're trying. Let's let's like it's very very tragic, horribly yeah. horribly, and it hurts us as as uh, former policemen. Um, but what we see in the media is this massive focus on blame. You know. Mm. Did they? Who did this? Who didn't that? Um, we just we don't we don't focus. The, the only people, why don't we start blaming the people that pull the trigger? Yeah, you know, that killed them. Yeah. So we just tend to forget about them, and we start looking at all these other areas of blame and sensationalising the a, and try to write a story of maybe a story that's not even there. You know, let's apportion yeah. blame to someone. It's his fault, their fault, what for? And, and the whole society's gone like that, and media has been the driving force behind that. Yeah, well, it does certainly plays a part. I think you can use the media. Strategically, of course, you can, yeah. and and I, I think you did. I did all uh, the time. We, we, we had a wonderful relationship with them. Yeah, t- talked about. There was one thing that hit the uh, hit the media that we talked about before that uh, I sort of have a laugh, but the, the the headlines read something along the lines of "Lazy Police Stop Having Coffee" or something. What right. did you do there? Tell us well, about I, that. I think at the situation. time, at, at, at the time, I was at um, at my office was at, at Hurstville with a Middle Eastern organised crime squad yep. memory and. Um, I'd constantly go to Parramatta, you know, and I had this bit of a thing. Well, the co- I don't, I didn't, I never understood where this coffee world came from. You know. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, people were, you know, back in our day, well, we're going, every afternoon we're going to go and have a beer. Yeah. Well, and and all this was just new. I'm not saying one good thing or a bad thing about yeah. it. Um, I'd go there and I'd, I'd park out the front of the police headquarters and. Um, and you know, you'd walk past this cafe and be full of cops, you know. And um, I'd go into into the into the headquarters there and I'd have a meeting. I'd walk out an hour later, and the, the same cops would be still in the cafe. I'm <laughs> going, and, and then and then you, I just come from a meeting. We don't have enough police. I said, well, they're in the freaking coffee shop, mate. Go down there and find them, you know. Like, um, so a, a short time later, I I went back to I think I was promoted to a chief superintendent there at at Parramatta. Yeah. You know? And I'd see the same thing. I'd, and I went down for a coffee myself every now and then, yeah. but not every day. You know, go down a quick coffee or we'll get a takeaway and come back, you know, yeah. blah, blah. Um, so and I thought, well, we can't have this, you know. People, it's quite in, in an, um, we're going into industrial awards and stuff. People yeah. think that they have the right to just stop work when they want. Yeah, have well, a coffee. That's not the way I was brought up. Yeah. You know, I worked at McDonald's. You actually had a little bit of break here and you may have had a break there, but rarely. But uh, so I put this email out to say, listen, we have we're in an environment where there's a lot of uh, shootings and bombings and stuff. I said, you people are sitting ducks. You go to the same place, yeah, at the same time. If someone wanted to bomb that cafe, we'd lose probably you know a large number of the staff and, and high levels of staff. But and and you don't get paid. You don't get paid for coffee breaks. You know, you get paid for having a break in fifteen dare, minutes. How dare you suggest and, that? And I just suggest, and it was it was sort of just a. The oh, thing. Off and, the and, and I think, but the game, the media yeah. tied that up to going, How I'm this, and he's from there, and he's, he's a racist as well. That was part of the article, was that I was a racist, which was a ching ching for me because I sued them and the, 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 the agency, and I sued the, the media outlet. Yeah. And- <laughs> Got a, good, got a good drink uh, out. Not only <laughs> yeah, like, accused of being racist, but you're also a uh, coffee. You didn't yeah. like coffee. Coffee drinkers. Nazi. No, I didn't like coffee drinkers. No, but. Look, I, and see, saying that, and uh, I, I don't drink coffee, so that maybe that saved me from being part of the coffee culture. But mm. I would see that, and it was always there was a sort of trend that that's your right to have a coffee, which is grab a coffee or whatever if you, you need yeah. a coffee, but not the sit down there for an hour and have the, have the coffee. So when that came out, I quietly supported you. I didn't overtly support oh, not you. Too many, not, not so I've many supported me. They bloody, had, we have the right to have coffee. Yeah, Let's that, have half the day off oh, and drink coffee. He, you know? He's lost the plot, that Ken no, no, I'd, I'd say, but quietly behind the scenes, I was supporting uh, uh, you. And that was just an inter-office email to the staff. Yeah. yeah. But no. um, 
For quite funnily enough, a lot of people agreed, totally agreed. Yeah, it. It, yeah. ridic- it got to a ridiculous stage where just people were, as I said, sitting in the co- cafe for an hour. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. And a lot of they, you know, all the other ones that, that, that didn't agree with me said, oh, we've discussed a lot of uh, good briefs down there. On the <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And we're, the same as about, you know, we discuss over a couple of beers, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine, well, we yeah. could have gone to the pub and discussed yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, not. No, but I, I, I like that, Kimber. That sort of encapsulated the uh, the type of excitement you created in a place when, you, uh, when you're working. But look, let me let me say this. When I did, like you've sat above uh, homicide because of the different levels yeah. that you're uh, there, and so quite often I was reporting to you and uh, one uh, particular uh, case, the uh, murder of Terry Falconer and all the spin-off yeah. murder investigations yeah. from there, I always liked when I had to speak to you when you were in there because I knew you were a detective and, uh, yeah, I'm not pissing in your pocket here. It's just that you've been there, done that. So when I'm coming in to brief you, it made a difference. Well, like, I, well, I actually knew what was going on too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but that's, yeah. a, that's the thing. I could say, yeah, we need to do this and you'd understand it. Or you'd say, well, why don't you think of this? You know, it might be not agreeing with it, but just pointing in a yeah. direction. Whereas sometimes I'm briefing people above that have never done it, no idea what it's about, and have no comprehension of what I'm talking yeah. about. Well, that, that whole process was designed was designed for me as a a senior person perceived to be smart. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I used to, uh, I don't know how, I don't know why your brain gets this way, that I would read all the different briefs that, so I had all those yeah. different squads reporting to me. I knew more, and I'd go down and I did this, I got this master's in MBWA. Yep. You know, I did it at uh, one of the universities called Management Why Wandering About. <laughs> and I would go and sit down with the young people. I'd go walk in the homicide squad, wouldn't even acknowledge the boss. Just one year who I want to yep. talk to. I'd go to different squads and find out what's going on with the job. Yep. So when the squad commanders used to come up and report, oh, like that's you were doing, yeah. like yep. you were doing, I knew more about the brief. Yeah, okay, they did, that's what Because they would never got out of their office and went and spoke to the young people. I thought you just wanted to hang out with me when you were coming No, down, I get, so I get <laughs> the guts, you know, I get yeah. the guts on it. So I just did all the time because I, I used to find it funny when the bosses of the different squads would come to report. Yeah. You know, they need to get their head in around their head around their jobs, and then you'd start questioning them yeah. about a brief, and you, you'd easily pick up that they haven't sort of got their head around. But it, it. makes a difference, and and you have that instinct that always needs to be overlaid with facts. But you've got that detective's instinct, and I, I remember another case of. Um, uh, I think it was the Bob Lubick murder. I was out at chats with. Yeah. I'd been rotated out there as the uh, crime manager, and I had this murder investigation. I had a spin-off of the ATM robberies, yeah. and I had this bloke that you know, Ram Roach, yeah. yeah, could have uh, could have helped out. And I'd phone state crime and try to get someone interested. And I thought, I'll oh, stuff this. I'll, I'll pick up the phone and speak to you. And I, I, I think the conversation was about as brief as this. Hey, Ken, I've got a gig over here that's got some really good information. I think he might be worthwhile. Yeah. Um, buying into. I haven't got the staff here. I'm at an LAC, but yeah. I think there's some uh, major crime that uh, could be solved. You're in the car within half an hour and over there and uh, getting the full details of it. And that, that was the difference because you knew that you got to, you can't let this person sit there and, and wait. This was well, a time to know, strike. As you know, you just got to make the best of every opportunity. Yeah. You know? and, and so a lot of those opportunities just uh, wash out. You know, you, they don't turn into opportunities, but it, it, you don't know until you go there. You know? yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think a lot of the best opportunities, if you ever see police criticised in the blame society, yeah. uh, it's over them not doing something. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Why? Um, why didn't you do that? And again, in, and, and we see that a lot. So in that instance, yeah. If you get it, it's only a half hour drive backwards and forwards. Yeah, and if it yeah. turns to rubbish, it's rubbish. But if it turns to gold, it's gold, you know. But, and but everyone's looking famous, you know. But, but just the fact that you could understand the shorthand going, mate, this is one that is worth yeah. speaking to. And you, you understood that mm. because you had, uh, you yeah, know, you had done that type of uh, type of work before. Yeah. Well, but again, you get to know people, you know, who's in the police force, who could be trusted, who, yeah. who's not going to ring a superintendent of police up and say, mate, and yeah. give you a, and give you an absolute dud, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that ain't yeah. going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, without its consequences. But, um, yeah, you're just making the best of opportunities. And it's, and it's about, I hate to say it, a lot of it was laziness. Yeah. Oh, no, I'd be right, mate. We'll do it later on. You know, that, that sort of yeah. thing. No. 
I, I, I was always excited to go to work and be able to achieve something, you yeah. know. Uh, and, and even at the end of the day, you know, if we're, we're working back tonight, we're working back. You know. But that, that it, co- it costs you a whole lot of stuff in terms of your marriage and all that sort oh, of stuff. Oh, you, 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 know. you, you and, destroy the rest of your life. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah you uh, make it hard for the crooks that you're targeting. Yeah. But that's you, – you talked about the, the game, the sport and all that, and we understand the consequences. So when we say sport, we're not cheapening it. But – it was the thrill of the chase. Yeah, and for sure. you would you would get a taste and you go, oh, I'm on to that. And you would work back or you'd take the phone call at midnight and uh, hmm. move on move on things from it. So, is it- it's, it's the excitement of finding out what actually the team can achieve, you know, yeah. the young people can achieve uh, and the successes they can achieve, you know. Yeah. Uh, I hate going to functions where all these broken, you know, us old broken down bosses yeah. are there and, and a, a fellow that's retiring will tell the world of all the big cases he's done. And if there are anything like me, he didn't yeah. do many cases. He just sat around. Yeah, and yeah but building, building. You sort of that drove team. the bus, you know, and there was all the young <laughs> blokes running around and young girls running around diving on cases, you know. But that—that's you, you. That's good leadership, really, isn't it? Well, that's what leadership that, is. That, you know? that, that's proper leadership. Facilitate people yeah. being able to facilitate their, you know, getting the job done. You know? And create, creating the team. And and you didn't. Uh, I, I looked at your team. So you didn't have a team of Ken Mackay um, clones because that wouldn't have worked. Oh no, no. So yeah, you, yeah. you'd have you'd have yeah. You know, I'm not saying you're not, but the super reflective, intelligent, analytical type person. You'll have you'll need the door kickers. You'll need the risk takers. Yeah. But you need to balance that team out. Is that what you? You need for? the whole. Of, you need the whole of the asylum working with you. You know, <laughs> it, it's quite. Yeah, you're right. You've got to have the, the really, really. I tell you, the probably one of my favourite jobs was my last job is, is that, that um, a special services group where. Yeah. Um, you had under your command there, you had the undercover branch. Yep. Um, you had the special technical branch, yeah, which was the, the putting the bugs and the yep. listening devices. You had the air wing. You had the water police, um, but you had the the um, I used to call them the propeller heads. Uh, what are they called? Stib. You know the blacks <laughs> that uh, all these highly highly intelligent, yeah. super super smart people. Yeah. I used to shake my head. The, the, know, I go up there for a briefing, <laughs> yeah. and I couldn't get my head around some of the stuff they would do. You know. Yeah. Uh, and the dedication. There was a fellow there who sold his software company for multi millions of dollars, and he yep. worked. He worked as on public service wages, doing technical work for the cops because you know, he just loved. Because he was that smart. Yeah, you know. yeah, just doing it. But so, they're, they're the type. They're, yeah, and that, you've got to have everybody. You know, that makes a difference, doesn't mm, it? That, yeah. that that can be the difference between success or failure yep. on a, an investigation. It all, it always is. You know, you got and again, it's horses for courses, jobs for the right people. Yeah. So if you put a whole raft of People around you um, that have all the different skill sets, and yeah, as like you, you, you soon figure out who are who's at the back of the bus, and you got to offload them. Yeah, you know, that's just typical. You're, you're going to be at the on the bus. You're going to be at the front. Yeah, and you got to strive to drive. Yeah, you know that they they got to want to drive the bus, and I can just sit back and carry and walk yeah. around. I can talk on the you know like a the tour guide on the microphone, <laughs> but but the, you, what you got to do. It's a difficult thing in the public service where you – how do you reward good behaviour or, or good performance and bad performance? Yeah, it's a very it, difficult thing to is, do. And the difficult. only way you can do yeah. it is by punishing the non-performers. Right. Yep. So oh, how do you punish them? Well, you just do nasty things to them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, what know. he means by that? Yeah, is, I don't know. That's, that's a secret. <laughs> okay, yeah. it might be. I'll write a book about that one. Yeah, yeah. get put on night shift. But or, the, you, yeah. you can't expect good people to keep doing good work if you allow ordinary people not to do work. Well, I yeah. I worry. All that it does is piss them off. We yeah. strive for mediocrity. If if and we should never yeah. be striving no. for mediocrity. No. Like it's not that we work at the pace of the lowest mm. person. It, it should be that's what you're aspiring to. And, yeah, uh, I. It worries me in the police culture organisation that you're not allowed to sort of push for the good people, and so it's the people at the back of the bus that is a nice Just way go to along describe for the ride, it. Yeah. They go along for the ride, do nothing wrong, get promoted, happy days. Yeah, it's a, it's an easy path to take, isn't it? But we're yeah. sounding we're sounding bitter and twisted. No, so no it's not bitter. It's just it's just modern management principles. Yeah. Mate. Yeah. yeah, the people you could try to get the people at the back of the bus up to speed. You offer them all the incentives, offer them all the assistance, but at the end of the day, some people aren't going to want to get off. If they're, the back if, they're not, if they're not interested, no, they're, they're not they're, interested. They're, and, and, and you say, well, what did you, you? You can't understand why they join the cops or, or, or why? Yeah. You, say, you just got to offload them. Well, I, I always said like we've uh, if because someone, it, cause when you do when you do offload them, yeah, the people up the front of the bus see that as a reward. Because yes. they get to stay in what they love doing in the front of the bus and doing this, and all these other people that 
<laughs> have just been a poison on the office yeah. or in this in the organisation have been discarded and got rid of. Yeah. I, well, I, I've said to people, young young police when they're coming in, you know, what to the best path to to go. And I, I've said I've basically worked wherever I wanted to work throughout my whole whole career. That's been my reward. I haven't been promoted, ridiculously promoted, but I got to work where I wanted to work. And so I, I say. You're coming into the police, if you work hard and you're competent and you're passionate and you, you're ticking all the boxes, the chances are you'll get to work where you want to work, yeah. but not necessarily in the promotion system. You're not going to get recognised and get plucked out and promoted, but you'll get to work where you want to work, and I think that's a, a yeah. on the type of cases you want to work on. Because when you when a job happens, you look around and you want to reward the good workers, put them on a good job. Yeah, that But you've got to be very careful in that. In the, Yes, a good job, yeah, yeah. but- uh, I've seen any number of people get burnt out by they go. You, the boss walks yeah. out into the office space. There, there's yeah. 50 people, and another job. I'll give it to them because they're the best at it. And the other ones over there are getting what they sit in the back of the bus getting a ride. That's you know? th- that. I, I see. And these people over on the right hand side of the office they only put their hand up when the overtime's on. I said, "Well, you haven't done any work during real time, let alone overtime. No, you're not having it. You're right. <laughs> and they take no ownership in it. Once no. once the job's done, and the next couple of years that you've got to battle through court, no, you see the ones that do an overtime again. I want to talk about a case that uh, I, I think yeah, people. There's been so many rumours, so many stories about it, but the uh, the theft of uh, rocket launchers. And yeah. uh, rocket launchers that uh, are out and about in the uh, criminal world. Do you want to tell us a story about that? Because you were uh, involved heavily in uh, in that and the background to it and uh, what happened. Yeah, that goes back to oh, um, the uh, the aftermath of the it, the Darwish Razak shootings, and uh, Darwish was charged with a number of murder. Uh, offences um, uh, under the auspices of uh, Gaines, and um, yep. a, a number of the Gain people came to Middle Eastern Organised Crime Squad, came across uh, again, uh, and good, wonderful young people, and they were cha- they were following up um, uh, Darwish, and he was doing multiple life sentences out at uh, Lithgow, and um, he wanted to chat to them, and so the two young people, I sent them out there to, they had the rapport with him, and well, not much of a rapport, but they had, they knew him. Uh, and they went out there a number of occasions. He actually wanted to do a deal and and deliver um, um, explosives and, and firearms and the like. And and uh, and so I went out with them and um, for a day trip out there. And we and we go and see him. And you know he wants some un- he wants all these unrealistic uh, uh, things for, in return for a rocket launcher. And he brought it up. And we got talking about that and, and explosives and. Anyway, he just he just yeah. I want to be a, I want a full pardon. And I said, "You're dreaming." Three, three murders. Yeah, three yeah. murders. Yeah, That'd be an easy report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're dreaming. What is it? And, and anyway, we we went out a couple of times and with the, with the, the two young uh, detectives working for me, and um, it got to the stage where you know we just had a, a gut full of this bloke, and he was just his his demands were way over the top. And the last thing I said to him, I said, "Well, you know." I've got your mother. She owes twenty five thousand bucks to the, um, the, the the crime commission, and I've spoken to the crime commissioner. He's willing to waive that if you want to come on board and, and give us these um, firearms and, and blah, blah blah. And otherwise, go to Bargary. We're out of here. What are you doing now? We're going to have a nice lunch up the pub. You're yeah. going back to your cell. Funny yeah. that, isn't it? So off we go. And uh, yeah, you know, it was a couple of weeks later. And, um. I got a phone call. I gave him the contact details to you know, to give to his brother. Yeah, made some arrangements if it ever came to, to came to be. And it, it was a really rainy day. And I was supposed to be out sailing, and we were down the pub at uh, Cronulla because of a poxy day, and sailing is cancelled. And and uh, you know the phone rings, and it's uh, it's one of the relatives of this Adnan Darwish, and he said, "I've got those things for you." I went, "Oh no!" So I just had, just had a first uh, uh, just on that too, Ken, because it, it's. Those rocket launchers, it was rumoured so, uh, uh, like, within um, the uh, policing side of things, but also the criminal world, like it was a big ticket item that people wanted to, we know where those stolen rocket launchers are because of the damage that those rocket launchers. Yeah, well, if you go back, um, during the shooting of the uh, Razak house at uh, Chalora, yeah. Yeah. our information through, through very reliable sources were they had the rocket launcher there ready to fire a rocket launcher through into this house, you know. Yeah. And they just actually they didn't. 
and that was just because they didn't. Was, I don't know. They never got to understand why they didn't, but um, they didn't do it then. And so it was well known that these things were in existence. And this, this was all law enforcement agencies across the country, the, the New South Wales Police, Crime Commissions, everyone were uh, AFP, all fearful of the fact that the criminal gangs have got yeah. uh, got these rocket launchers. Yeah, but by the same token, there was um, a large proportion of those law enforcement groups deny that that would ever be the case. They were out there. They said, no, nah, that's just, just fallacy. Yeah, so it you know. was that. But uh, we had uh, you know, some good information, and uh, I think back in Bobby Inkster's day, they were getting some good information about it, that, of the existence of them. They're out and, and about. They were there. So it was never really a, a 100% sure really. Okay. So we've got you drinking at the uh, – well, I was just, just, just about to have my first beer. First beer, And yep. the phone rings. It's sun, Saturday morning down at the Cronulla pub, and um, um, it's – uh, one of the Darwish family, and so I got those things for you. I got, oh, this is handy, you know. And uh, so, well, okay, I'll meet you at your place, and we'll, we'll just do the business, yeah. you know. So I got onto a couple of colleagues of mine, young people who work for me. You know, for the first priority is, oh, have you got a gun at home? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might need a couple, and um, we're going to we're going out to do this. So we, I rang another uh, another couple of young people out from out who lived out west to meet us, and. And uh, and I rang one of the young ladies that worked with us, and another young fellow. And luckily enough, they had guns at home. So they were on call, and um, so off we go. Out we go there, and sort of the only way we're going to do this is it could be a bit dodgy. So I rang on the way out. I remember ringing the you know, um, uh, ringing the bomb squad. I said, oh, "Mate, I think I'm going to go and get a, hang, a rocket launcher and some C4 <laughs> plastic explosives yeah. and some debt cord." I said, "You got any advice?" <laughs> he goes, you can't touch it. Just, you know, don't do it. You don't do it. I said, mate, I didn't ask what I can and can't do. I asked you what it should and shouldn't do, you know. And I just hung up on him and, and off we go. And uh, so we, the only thing we did, it was quite funny. I said, I'm going to do this. So give us your gun. Put a gun in one pocket. And I turned my phone on. I rang one of my colleagues, a yeah. young fella. I said, mate, just listen in on this, will you? Off we go down the driveway, you know, this back of the car, pull all this stuff out and a couple of trips back to our car, and the boots full of a rocket launcher and, uh, you know, like salami, um, a plastic explosive and debt and debt cord and yeah. stuff and some guns. And so uh, on the way back to um, our office at Hurstville and I was ringing the bomb squad again. He goes, Did, what, have you, what have you done? I said, <laughs> I said, mate, they're in the boot. Any other ideas? He, goes, <laughs> he said, don't. Drive your car in there and don't go near your car. <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was all right. Um, a few people. Now, we're not encouraging. Could you imagine if you had to type up some operational orders? Well, we like, didn't have that, time. You know, yeah, you got to. You that's extinct circumstances that you've got to act on. You've got to act on stuff. You know, you, again, as I said, it's. That's a risk. It's a, but again, it's not. I'm not going to go and get myself hurt. No chance in hell. I'm yeah. not dying for this. It's a, calc a calculated, calculated risk. Calculated risk. Yeah. risk and, and, you know, I was yeah, fine. Yeah. Not, not uh, total cowboy. I think, I think you're more at risk, not from the product we picked up, is from what you're walking into into that environment. That's why I had all, all my, my, my back covered there. Yeah. So no, you don't take stupid, you know, only the fools take sort yeah. of risks, you know. No. But again, you've you've seen the situation and thought, jump on it. Now, if you didn't respond that way and said, oh, look, I've, I've got to get approval, I've got to mm. sort this out, sort that out, it very well might be. I'd be oh, it could be gone. Stuff you, but I don't trust you. What are you setting this yeah, up for? Exactly but, right. Yeah, yeah. So you've, you've, got to, uh, yeah. you've got to trust your instinct on yeah. a degree. And, and, and to have me as my rank to walk out there and, and confront this fellow yeah. who I knew, uh, you know, just dressed in shorts and, and, and sailing shoes and, yeah, you know, and for, for as far as you knew, unarmed. Well, it just creates that environment where they they know you can be trusted. You know, I, I think that comes back again to the the profile. You had a profile that with the gang squad and all the work that mm. you were doing that you get people to trust you. That if you okay, well, I've got actual. Well, even the bikers, even the bikers would yeah. meet with me. You know e exactly, and I, I think that's what's uh, misunderstood sometimes uh, with uh, with policing. I had a profile for homicide investigation. I know I could use that profile to my advantage because people yeah. would, okay, you're going to meet the boss yeah. of, of the investigation. And I think we miss that uh, miss that opportunity in policing that if any, everyone's anonymous. Yeah, but, but yeah, that's what you're saying. That, that, the whole thing I was saying earlier, yeah. that you're a statue in the back and, and especially in the whole uh, uh, community affected you know, yeah, communities that are affected by organised crime, they want to see. They want you. They they own you. 
Yeah. You are ours. You're part oh, you're, of us. Yeah. You know, like that's what they want. Yeah. Um, and again, it's the same in 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 any crime line. You know, they want someone who's um, they can trust, and they someone who's got got the runs on the board. You yeah. Know? Uh, and not that they're your own runs, because you've always, as I said, you've always. Um, Achieving stuff through others, but you're still, oh, it's, it's, but you're achieving stuff through the community and through yeah. these groups. Yeah. And it, it's a, it's always a team effort. Like any any major crime is uh, yeah. a, a, te- a team effort. But that one, you know, from that it was, you know, it was, uh, it was a live rocket launcher, it was plastic <laughs> explosive, and all the blah blah. But it did give rise to further investigations. Well, yeah, and and where that went was into a uh, another investigation that was conducted. And where they they arrested and charged the people who stole them from the army. Oh, no, that's right. You uh, end up they, uh, getting hmm. the getting the people. So yeah, yeah. But uh, there's a lot of talk still about are there still more out there? Because it was never. I don't think it was ever defined as to how many were actually stolen, or yeah. or was it the group that was arrested were the only people that stole it, or because yeah. it was equipment that uh, had it met- was to to be disposed of, right? And they just diverted it, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, put it put it out there on the streets. Yeah, but it is uh, is frightening with a, a weapon like that or mm. potential of what it could have done. Uh, but since then, I, I think I would. You know, so again, I might sound like yeah. I'm sitting on the fence, but I, I, I believe there could be stuff out there. But I, I, I str- more strongly believe that if they were out there, I would have heard about it or yeah. someone would have heard about it because the Middle Easterners and the different people and the different criminals like to, to brag about it. Yeah. And I don't think everyone's even bragged about it of late, you know, not since that crazy man down at, in Supermax, his name, um, Bass Amsey, yeah. you know. Yeah, he, he's a trash. He's the greatest trash talker in history. That bastard. Brothers you know? for life. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. He, he always said, oh, "I've got a couple of those. They're nothing, you know." <laughs> yeah. Bass, please stop it. You're a fool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but I really believe that you, the police, and and those involved in the organ in, in organised crime would have heard if they were out there because they love to brag and, and not just bragging, but trading. If someone was jammed up, yep. if they oh, knew, yeah. But, but the, the the greatest thing the Arabs used to do, yeah, in the criminal world. As soon as they got locked up, they'd have a stash of firearms over there, and they just kept that. That was their bargaining chip with the cops. You know, and we all yeah. knew it. Yeah, they only get they only get the shitty old guns for them to get some benefit at court, or or the cops to do them a favour of some. That variety. was to uh, to reduce the uh, reduce the sentence, sentence, or yeah. yeah. But yeah, we soon latched onto that. You know, they all just had a stash. <laughs> that's not bad. Plan. Well, it is. It was just a bit <laughs> yeah. of insurance, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I could tell. I could tell the cops. Well, there's all these guns over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are my guns. But anyway, yeah. we'll leave that. That's right. Um, the Cronulla rights. Uh, you had to head up the uh, not mm. when it was occurring, but the investigation and looking at uh, what happened, or yeah, just yeah. shortly after it, it started to escalate. What happened there with the Cronulla rights? Like two thousand. Well, I, but I lived there. I lived up the road. Um, I, yeah. and I was on holidays, and uh, I went down there in the morning. Um. Because it was a, a, you know, a normal walking track of mine down th- past the beach there, and there was um, a big gathering. It had been prior to that, prior to that, it had been well documented how there was a number of incidences down at Cronulla Beach where uh, people of ethnic background, not necessarily only uh, those of the Middle Eastern heritage, but uh, different uh, yeah. backgrounds. Um, had been down there and, and allegedly causing trouble, uh, you know, kicking sand, fighting, stuff like that. Um, and all of a sudden, it got to a stage where a couple of um, lifeguards uh, had come to blows with um, some different people uh, down there uh, from out, out of the area. Yep. Uh, and that this, this, this instance was Middle Eastern people. Um, and uh, you know, social media took over. Yeah, uh, we want to win. We want to fight. We want to win back the beach, you know. So they had a big. So when I walked past there early in the morning, you, you could see it, the shit was going to hit the fan because yeah. it was hot, it, there was uh, grog everywhere. There's Australian flags up on top of the pine trees hot, down there, yeah. all that hot, you know. Blah, yeah. blah. I said, oh, this is going to turn to rubbish, you know. So I went down there later on, and, and um, I got a mate who has a restaurant that have a looks area. So I went and had a chat with him, and yeah. we were just having a beer and. Watching this and going, oh god, you know, this doesn't look good. No, I was ringing the yeah. cops and just saying this, this is. A, but it, but have it going, having been part of and lived out in the in the, in the community, yeah. and had done a lot of work in the Middle Eastern world, 
you know, they'd all ring me and say, oh, they're gathering at Punchbowl Park so, man, yep. on holidays, you know. Yep. And I'd, I'd be betraying, uh, relaying information to the, the, the command post, but it just turned to rubbish. And the next day, it, yeah, you had to drive through Cronulla and, yeah. and you, you, know, you saw what happened. And again, I'm still on holidays, but I got the, the dreaded phone call. They, they set up a small task force of about 20 people. That yep. A really good fellow policeman was running that. And um, it was sort of interfered with by police media and, and the desire to put some story out and yeah know. and anyway and again the blame society blame the boss of the, 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 the dennis bray a really good fellow and he, he does wonderful work and yeah he uh, he uh he copped some stuff from that yeah. didn't he undeserved uh well, the, criticism yeah. yeah yeah and that was all you know i think the commission at the time got bad information from Ken Moroni got bad information from his media people. I think yeah. they were the blame about information getting out and not enough information getting out. And yeah. what, you know. Anyway, I'm holidays, get called in to his office, uh, the commissioners, and I said, I want you to take it over. I said, well, this is what I need. And um, we, you know, I saw a need to get the band back together, I got my honk back on board. and, <laughs> and, <laughs> <My> honk, <wait. laughs> and A number of yeah. people said we'd never work together again. But, um, yeah, over a long weekend, we set up a, a whole hundred yep. people. Uh, of detectives at yeah. um, at uh, Marion, at Hurstville, yeah, and that was to investigate it from both uh, both Everything. sides the from the, from the the yeah. Cronulla crowd and the yeah. the people that were coming in from yeah. uh, outside yeah. Cronulla. all the events of the day and yeah. and and further afield. So yeah. looked, don't forget, it went into the next night over uh, over the east, and, yeah, and, and that later that night and right along and Foreshore Drive and. Yeah. And there was uh, to, to the- negate the risk. There was police set up, roadblocks set up to stop people coming in the Cronulla or the yeah, that, that was on the day. Yeah, yeah, that was that was extended for about ten days yeah. after as well. And I was still on holidays, you know, at this stage. Yeah. And so, but then the the team of people is right from the start. Where was, was your about- command post at your mate's uh, restaurant? <laughs> no, 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 I was on holiday. I, just, yeah. I didn't get involved. Um, yeah, and uh, until they rang me and, and had to go for a meeting with the commissioner, but. To take it over, but they never had enough staff to start with. There's about five, as, as we went, we did all the yeah. analysis. There's about five thousand five hundred events. Yeah, from that, that, it's that thing. Hard to investigate yeah, that many. The, the flow be- chart. I remember the, having, looking at the flow chart yeah. that the anal- analysts did. You know, in the timeline, and went around the room, a big room, yeah. and then went around again. <laughs> so <it's, laughs> I haven't like, seen one that big. It was like <laughs> okay, and, and so we did all that and. But again, it was a thing about getting the right people together. Yeah, um, that these are the difficult ones where you just get you just grab people and and watch it. And what happens? The local area commanders usually send their dead weight. The, the ones from down the back of the bus. Yeah, yeah, because they, that's a good way of getting rid of them. They send yeah. them to you. But uh, what you've got to do in that regard as a leader is just try and get Courage. everyone on board. You know. Yeah. And, and, and why, uh, what I find, you actually give people, and you know, you can pick up pretty quickly, they're not overly interested. You give them something that they've never done before. Yeah. And you track, and you, you, you sit down with them every day. How's it going? Yeah. Mate? You know, like, Try to get the best out of them. Yeah. Make them feel and and, and there was a wonderful group of people. Everyone's yeah. shone. You know, everyone's shone in that. We ended up arresting, I think it was 99, uh, 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 let me think, um, of the Arab side of the world. Yep, and a hundred of the Aussie side of the world, you know, okay. and we called it a draw. That <laughs> okay, was enough. Well, that's a- that was enough donkey. That's enough. <laughs> okay, that's a good way. But to it, 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 um, that was a, a horrible part in in Sydney's history. Oh, it, 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 notorious, wasn't it? It yeah. was uh, really a wake up call, and it's something that you you didn't think you'd see. Mm. Uh, and what, what happened in that is that a lot of the uh, uh, people in the Arabic side of the world who were of the criminal element. Yeah. Got involved because uh, this is their, their opportunity. They That's saw an it. opportunity to dive in, you know. Yeah. Um, so they were heavily involved in it. And yeah. again, the silly uh, people down at Cronulla, the, the, the white people, whatever, whatever yeah. you want to call them, the Caucasian, whatever, I don't know what the term, correct term is anymore, but we just call them the shy L- people. <laughs> LGBT, yeah. and other. They're the other ones. Okay. You know? Yep. And uh, they just didn't know what they were taking on. I, I could see it. You wait till it gets gets you wait yeah. till it gets dark, you bastards. This is going to really hit the fan. Yeah, it was, it was ugly. But uh, mm. oh, look, I'm glad. Well, we haven't had a repeat of that no. magnitude, which is no. Uh, it was a very, very sad sort of time in history. But um, yeah, uh, right across the board there. But but again, you know, uh, the whole lot. And I said right, and again about managing investigations. I said to the commissioner, I said I'll be doing the interviewing of the yep. media and only me. 
Can we have an agreement on that? See, I, I like that. And he I said, like yeah. that. <laughs> yes, that, it's oh, all yours. There, and I'll hand that. And that's so, funny, isn't it? I, I because, know. Because you can, you can, what's the new saying? It, you know, how people just find uh, and they steal uh, new management terms. Direct the narrative. The narrative is a new word. That's only come out in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, before that, it was paradigms and, and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, you know. Okay. It's, um, so you can have it. I had a, me I had a media interview yep. every afternoon at three yep. o'clock. But that's taking control of the situation. Mm. When when there's all these mixed messages go going on, uh, I found that with the uh, William Tyrrell uh, matter, there was all these mixed uh, mm. messages. People were talking all over the place. When I took that over five months after the disappearance, I said, if we're going to do it, it needs to be one person. Mm. So I'm sending out the same message, the, the consistent message. Mm. But what happened with the, with the initial group, Dennis Braysbaugh? Yeah. He was saying something. Yeah. That he had facts on as a fact. Then the police media branch is saying a completely different thing. And then seven, the commissioner was saying another thing. So, because <laughs> he had been told that by them. So the whole thing was a mishmash. So I yeah. just love it. They wouldn't blame Dennis. <laughs> the only bloke was telling the truth was he, but he got. <laughs> he got poof. Oh, well, uh, shout, shout out to Dennis. He's a good, uh, good operator. Yeah. 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 It's, but, um, um, yeah, but that, that was just a, yeah, as I said, a. A difficult choice because, and again, and I said to the commissioner right up, I said, "Mate, I live up the road. I was yeah. watching it. Yeah, um, I'm going to be arresting." And it happened. I, IA came out and said, "Oh, you didn't arrest so and so because you, he's, you're his foot, or his rugby coach." Went, well, no, he actually did get arrested. And yeah, I didn't do it. And well, that was going to come. And I said, "I just don't need it." You know, like yeah, you know, of course. Of course. Uh, being a Cronulla, like you know, I was living there at the time, and um, a bit close to home. The whole thing, to, but yep. we got through it. We got yep. by. You know, everyone had a good time. Strange times. Okay, I'm. Uh, I'm going to ask now. What is the good points about policing today, and what's wrong with policing today? So it's not just an attack on policing. It's just balance it out. What's your observations of policing today? I think uh, there's a. There's some still wonderful, wonderful investigators out there. Obviously, you only got yep. to look at uh, the crimes that are solved, yeah. you know. And um, so there is some um, glimmer of old style hope out there. Um, what I what I see a lot is uh, because uh, we don't have. We go right back to this start of the interview. Say my experiences at Campsie and as a young detective and, and Marrickville Newtown, where you had a whole raft of very senior people in the office who had hundreds of years of experience of in, mm. in, in detectives' work, you, you just constantly learn. And I even go into a detective's office now and there's very, very young people with very limited experience. And you know, I don't see too many teachers in there. Yes. You know, yeah. um, so I think what happens is that the investigators, a lot of them tend to go back to the, uh, as I said before, investigation by numbers, you know, join the dots. Yeah. And anything outside those numbers, we, no, don't, we, don't, get, we don't go there. Yeah. So there, and, and outside those numbers is where imagination, innovation, balls sit. Yeah, you know. all the important things that you need well, to because, crack the hard ones. Yeah, uh, and, and unless the, yeah, unless there's a crime where a crook's turned up, he's smashed into a window, he's bled on the window and he's reached in, he's got his fingerprints there. You know, yeah. that's, that's the investigation by numbers. But when you have the one that's got fully gloved up and he's got all his PPE, he's in there, he's in there doing this, doing that, you know, and he's doing it three nights a week and he's getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. How are we going to catch this? The Ram Raiders, that, you know, go yeah. back to the older chops. It you know, takes something different because the numbers aren't going to, Get him, yeah. you know. The numbers will report the crime, but the numbers won't actually get him. So you've got to start thinking outside the box, you know. Okay. So I, I understand what you're saying, and I've always had a problem. Um, and I think now, from now on, I'm just going to call them down the back of the bus people. But uh, yeah, it's how, catchy, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, it works for me. It's not too offensive. It's just you're making an observation. That they mm. are sit down the back of the bus. But yeah, it's. Yeah. You need these people just going that extra yard. The, the crimes, yeah, you can have the smoking gun scenario where you track an elephant through the snow. There's yeah. some crimes that you, you, very easy to solve. Mm. It's the difficult ones that, uh, you know, yeah, where you need the people with the experience, being there, done that, and prepared to take the risk, not just cowboy risk. You know, can you know, considered, okay, this is what we've got to do. If we want to catch this person, we've got to try this. Yeah. That, that type of yeah, thing. Uh, so, trying something different, you know. Yeah. 
And we, we need, I think we need leaders that recognise that type of skill set. And uh, that, that's going to be the uh, be the tricky tricky part. But, but also an organisation that, um, that supports that sort of capability because in an economic environment, people need to make more money you know, yep. because prices, costs go up. And it's... Now, you can't just sit as a senior constable with it doesn't matter how smart yeah. you are and 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 um, and how good you are. Yeah. You've you've got to be compensated for that ability and that capability and the expertise. Yeah. And it's got to be an ongoing compensation so you can actually li- you can live uh, a, a good yeah. normal life in a big city like Sydney where things cost and you, you a fortune. And you can stay doing what you can stay doing yeah. what you want. That we've got to try and get that into into the play. Yeah. Rather than people wanting to oh, I can't do this anymore because I can't afford to. Yeah, um, I've got to go and You've become an inspector it. because I need more money to because my kids are getting older, they're going to school, and but so people, the investigators have the same life uh, pressures that everyone does. Yeah, and if if yeah. they don't get rewarded financially, uh, they got to move. Uh, yeah, got to go get another job, and, and that job usually is a nothing job. Like, yeah, I, I, don't, I might say something derogatory, <laughs> but but a job that sort of doesn't mean anything to you. Yeah, and I've seen some miserable people. Yeah, they were great investigators. Great investigators doing this job over there, going been, been yeah. destroyed their county numbers or what, whatever they're yeah. doing. But yeah. um, I also I had issues with as an inspector that I was often criticised on getting too involved in investigations. And I mean, I'm getting involved in homicide investigations, difficult homicide investigations. I leave it to my team, and I hear you say you go out and out in the field, on the job, and have a look. I think that's important. You've got experience that when you walk into uh, to a situation that you've gone out with your team. I think that needs to be uh, recognised a little bit too, that, uh, yeah, as an inspector, okay, you're a commissioned officer and the, uh, all that above, but there is a need for having that operational experience out there. Otherwise, you've got kids out there, um, yeah, they might be a lot smarter than you and I, but they haven't mm. got that experience. Yeah, you know, just an interesting story. Um, we, I used to go out to jobs, and uh, there's that bloke. You know, you see yeah. the, the, the uniform blokes or the, the independent officer is usually the inspector yeah. from the police. I said, who's that bloke? He's yeah. oh, easy, our boss, his superintendent, you know, Mackay. What's he doing here? <laughs> they think they're <laughs> like, in they go, What aren't you blokes doing the right thing? Is he watching you? Go, yeah. No, he's just always here, mate. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry about him. Yeah. We were, but, but, but again, it was a funny job we did at um, – I, had to, I went to the property crime squad there for a while, and we did a big organised crime in yep. terms of multiple uh, arsons on the uh, hair care industry. Oh, I remember that. Where a bloke yep. named Gabriel Zackham, I think his yep. name was, was he's, he's nutter, absolute nutter. He was burning the hell out of a whole all, lot of- All his competition. All his competition, yeah. So so what we did was sat with the board. Again, wonderful young people. Um, and we, what we did, we, we thought, well, we'll arc this bloke up. And we'll say, right, oh, he's- uh, um, there's not too many of these left, you know. Yeah. Um, and we got wind that he was, Gabriel was uh, getting some people, they were just um, criminals, to burn this place down. Yeah. We thought, well, let's, let's change the thing here. So we got to, and what he did, he, he wanted to burn down all the places and he thought everyone was undercutting him in prices. And it was just a, a, a market of hair care products, yeah. you know, and, and it's like Woolies and Coles and that's what it was. Yeah. And so you don't have people going down burning down Woolies and Coles because one's cheaper than the other, blah, blah. So what we did, we, we got the boys to do up a, um, a bodgy uh, catalogue for yeah. this company. So, and we got all his products, <laughs> and we undercut him by the, a bucket load. And he arced up, mate. You, seen, you could hear him on the phones and his electronics on him. He arced up, sent a team around this bloke. We're all waiting for him. And there was myself and uh, I, uh, who was it? Uh, Adam. He looked like the owner. Yeah. I said, You look like the owner. You're in here with me. Yeah. And, and we said, Right, what he's going to do, we think they're going to come in and start shooting at us. Yeah. So I said, well, and then throw a Molotov cocktail in and burn it down. So what we did, we put all um, cardboard boxes on the stairs, and I thought, well, I've got to be the do- – I'm the fool here. I've, yeah. got, to, I've got to do you this could, one because well, I can't I can't, can't put someone else someone in there. In there. Yeah, but I had a Adam Phillips. Adam Phillips. Oh, remember yeah. Him? yeah great, I remember great, great, yep. you're great fellow. detective. And I said, you're, you look like him. You go and sit over at that desk over there. You, can't, you can yeah. just see the edge here. <laughs> <isn't it?" laughs> anyway, so we, we do it. Yeah, sure as hell. Um, they came in, but no, that wasn't a Molotov cocktail. They started shooting. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. okay, what happened? Yeah, dived on them. Everyone grabbed all these blokes. And, you know, no one got killed. No one lost an eye. 
but it was turned to shit. You know? Yeah. You know, even a couple of the crooks dived off. They were, they were going to wait an ambush for All us. All right, yeah. We wait an ambush. We we're going to, they're up, up about a story and a half up. So yeah. they jumped down when the cops came. <laughs> They hurt themselves and all that sort of stuff, but they lived. Oh. And but on that, because there was shots fired, there was people, there was like mayhem. It was yeah. good fun, really fun night. Um, Graham Morgan's turned up. <laughs> and yeah. and I thought, this is wonderful. Like, you just, mate, all good. Yeah, mate, all good. Yeah. Happy days. Fantastic. I'll deal with the rest. Yeah. You sort the boys out and I'll go and deal with that. Yeah. Is, uh, see, what a great story. So e- like- even, even all the blokes are just sitting there going, that's, that's, that's Graham Morgan. Isn't that great? Yeah, yeah. That's the, the boss, man. He's just out here making sure it's all good. Yeah. Well, see, that, that's leadership all the way up, that, yeah. uh, supporting. Ta- you've taken the risk. Yeah. But innovative, that was, that was good stuff. Was funny, I, yeah. I like yeah. that. That it was, was funny. That's hilarious. Well, that's- but before that, we went to the we – uh, Adam and I went to the fire brigade and said, we want a couple of really big fire extinguishers, and if they throw a Molotov cocktail, any ideas what we do? You know, <laughs> what's, like, what's the best practice? <laughs> but they came and shooting, but, so we didn't need no, the fire. So the best, best laid plans. But yeah, uh, so we went and grabbed him and the, the Gabriel Zackham, and they had him on toast. You know, so yeah, yeah it's good. But see, just that, that putting out that pamphlet with the uh, um, the price in his oh, yeah. his product. Oh, he went off his nuts. Yeah. Oh, fantastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. But that's fun. that's experience and having the confidence to try that because I could imagine if you went to the wrong person. And they get, oh no, we're not going to do that. That's you wouldn't know what's going to happen. Yeah. You took the risk and the, it paid off. Oh, it, it got him into the spot. Yeah, yeah. put him into the net. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's quite funny. Um, but in other, other terms, I think, and giving the police, I think when I when I went to SSG, I, yeah. I started this thing, and I've always been a proponent for it. And I don't know if it's going yeah. going still. I don't know what's happened since, but is to give people the technical capability, and we have we had technical capability, and at the uh, at the stib and the and the, and the different yeah. areas, which we kept it in house for fear of, oh, they might do the wrong thing, yeah. you know. Like, we go out with, you know, and it was an absurdity. Is it? We send young people out with guns on, yeah, and. And we're worrying about them, you know, um, not using, not appropriately using um, the technical capabilities yeah. that we have, like putting TI uh, capability at all police stations yeah. onto every detective's desk. Yeah. You know, what's this business? I used to sit there watching people from Walgett yeah. come in day after day yeah. into the, uh, to pick the up TI branch to pick up or to listen to their stuff. I said, oh, why don't I just yeah. send it to you and you stayed home? Well, I, uh, I at one stage in the investigation that I needed some listening devices and we just didn't have the numbers for the listening devices and uh, it, it probably dates that I think it was still Dick Smith was around, the electronics mm. store, and some young uh, young guy on the uh, strike force said, uh, you can get that type of stuff at uh, Dick Smith. Yeah. We had the warrants. We had all yeah. the approval and it was just in installing it. Mm. And we ended up putting off all these different uh, areas, I won't say so methodology, mm. all these different areas with the warrant and just their own uh, devices. And Stib's going, you can't do that. And I've gone, Where? Why, why can't you do that? We've got authority from the Supreme Court. You guys have told me you haven't got the equipment. Well, guess what? For 100 bucks, I've just bought the equipment and we're going to do it. Yeah. And, it and it worked. So, yeah, these type of things. You but just I, gotta- I hope they've gone through with that because I put a whole lot of stuff in, in place. Yeah. To facilitate that, you yeah. know, and, and we've got to get that technical. And again, it has to be, again, it's instantaneous. Have the case. like if you're a yep. young fellow in the in the country or even the suburbs of Sydney, and, that, and you've got a job to do, you've got a, you get a, a warrant for the judge, yep. and you say, "Bang, let's go and do it." And it's got got to be done. Hmm. But I, I think we've you know, they, say, oh, they might they might learn about our methodology. Watch the television, mate. Oh. I'll learn about your methodology. Yeah. Exactly. Like, watch Netflix. And uh, <laughs> like, uh, and people think they've got more methodolo- uh, more capability than what they've got anyway, so let the crooks be confused. Yeah. Let them be confused, confused by it. Yeah. But um, on that, with the future of uh, policing, it is, a, uh, it is a changing landscape, isn't it? Oh, from, it, from what it we- going, It's constantly going to, yeah. And you've got to stay one step ahead and you know, this electronic data and everything else, yeah. that's where the, uh, the game's going to be now, isn't it? You're going to have it. Have oh, it have. exactly. You know, and again, this stuff is not new. Um, and I do notice that, again, we're looking at the lag and the lack of ability yeah. for the police to be flexible. You know, I'd be interesting to see how many people are looking at these scams and stuff mm. because, and all the variety of scams, how many police people are looking at, how many people are trained up in that. This should, this should be all t- already done. 
because this has been around for years. Oh, now. yeah, and it, it's just that's going to be. You know, it's um, it's harder to play the, with. Uh, yeah, the crypto world and all that. Um, is going to continue to grow. Well, you're not going to rob a bank now, are you? Because you're not going to get any well, money there. Again, you, you're not with a, a balaclava and a, a uh, gun. Yeah, well, that's right. Because there's, you know, even that small businesses don't even take cash. You know? Yeah, I, I run a couple of businesses, you know, yep. voluntarily, and uh, I reckon, it's, you know, probably ninety five percent our cash intake has t- dropped. Yeah. yeah, it's all. FPOS, you know, all electronic, all. So no, people aren't going to come into shops and rob banks. They're not going to, but uh, yeah, and, and it won't be long before there ain't no cash transactions. You know, which, yeah. which hurt, hurts a couple of punter mates. And one we were talking about that the other day. Yeah. How do you have a punt with? Yeah. I don't know. Well, but, well, it's going to make it make it harder for a lot of people. Oh, yeah, but a I'm, lot of but, areas. But again, so the, the crooks are going to go into other areas. They're going to access that cash, that yeah. money, yeah, through other means. Um, I just hope. And I don't know. I hope the police force is way ahead of that game, you know, with a large, large number of people trained up in that yeah. field because it confuses a lot of us. You need that expertise, but speaking to uh, one old cop from another old, old cop, you also need that ability to be able to talk to people, don't you? The amount of, uh, at break, the end of the break, day. break at the end of the day. Like you, we we yeah. could have all the technical skills and, you know, all the yeah. um, intellect, but you need to be able to communicate with someone yeah. on their level. Yeah, I'm, like, yeah, I'm probably technically dumb, a dumb bastard, but. It didn't at SS, you know, the, uh, the technical services area I commanded. Yeah. It didn't take that long to get right above it, right onto it. You know, when you have, when it's all explained to you properly. Yeah. So yeah, at the end of the day, you've still got to have that person run out there and put the handcuffs on someone. Yeah. And talk to them, uh, and put the allegations to them, and 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 elicit confessions, and and you know, get the whole story about who else is involved, and and and. For inform, make them informants and use them yeah. in ongoing investigations and just talking them into, you know, you're going to wear a wire now or you're going to make a phone call or you're going to, you know, that sort of ongoing in the investigation because you rarely grab the, the, the kingpin on the first hit. Yeah. That's, that, that's just a fantasy, you know. But that's organised crime and they do yeah. give each other up. That's a, that's will, the reality yeah. of it. And you've got to explain you know, When that. they see that, the, you know, the jail cell in front of them, they start talking, the vast majority of them do. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's great. So, finishing up, you got no regrets about policing. You, you no. do it all over again. Great fun, you, yeah. Yeah, Great and fun. Uh, I, I can just see that I'm, I'm watching the excitement you're telling about the uh, cases, and uh, every day was an adventure. Yeah, it was, yeah. You know, there was a very, very, and I go go way, way back into any number of different jobs that we did, and you know, uh, yeah, you, you didn't. I, I don't think I ever said, and I never thought anybody in, in yeah. any number of, oh, God, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you, you actually do one job, go, oh, let's go and do that again. You know, that was good. <laughs> you you know, learn, like, learn from um, it. You know, uh, you've just got to have that attitude where you, you're there to get the job done. The, you have the, the, the community expectation. They they want stuff done. They don't give real, really have, give a shit how it's done. Yeah. We're the only ones that give a shit how it's done. We want to do it properly yeah. by the law. But uh, – the, the, the community expectations isn't such. No, they, they just want- to. Yeah, and the people often say, what do you do for a living? Or, what did you used to do? I said, I used to go out in the night and wreak havoc so you people would just have a nice little comfortable sleep at night you know, and deal with shit. Well, that, uh, Ken, that is actually, I, I'm looking here and uh, there was a quote that you had and I think it's a classic uh, Ken quote and I think it sort of sums up your uh, career and you just encapsulated it then. We deal with the dark side, which enables the good people to go about their lives, and that's what you were you were doing. You're out yeah. there doing doing the stuff that you don't need to know about. But no, we'll like get it if, done. if people really knew what went on in the middle of the night or, or in in out of sight, yeah, yeah, they'd be they wouldn't go out of home. Yeah, do you think there's a, a future for uh, a police officer like yourself or myself in the current environment? Oh, most definitely. You have to have them. You've you know, got to have. You them. can't all just be sitting back in the corner, uh, uh, anonymous figures. Um, there'll be young. There's young people out there. I know now. Uh, uh, they're, they're smart. Like, they're smart. They're aggressive. They're yeah. they're in, yeah. in, innovative, um, and and willing to really have a go and push the boundaries. And it's up to the organisation to to take impediments away from these people. Let them. Facilitate. You know, uh, facilitate these people getting the job done. Well, that sort of sums up the way that you talked about uh, leading your team. So it might be a, a good uh, good time to finish. But Ken, I, I want to thank you as a as a colleague. Um, I when 
I got into trouble or the controversial circumstances, I would have loved to have seen your face in the leadership group that I was briefing up rather than the people I, I spoke to. And uh, I'm not sure how it would have played out, but at least I, I felt like I would have felt like I've got someone that understands what was yeah. going on. Um, but also thank you as a member of the public for uh, yeah what you've done with your, your service and uh, yeah you've you've made an impact and you changed the landscape and there's not a lot of people that can say that about their careers so well done thanks mate hope you're enjoying your retirement too. Uh, having a ball <laughs> yeah you look like you are okay. cheers right on, mate. Bye thank bye you. Now.